Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one Muslim each sold his birthright. For you know how that that would when he would inherit the blessing. He was rejected for he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears. Let me take a moment of your time to say thank you again for letting me come. And be the speaker during this camp been a tremendous blessing to me and I shall always be grateful to you for inviting me this week and last week I've been coming off and on all these years here in the first one and it's great blessing every time I come God bless every one of you for what you've given let me say again I hope some of you can come to our camp next week or week after next, really. August the 8th through the 11th. Anyone from 12 years of age up? And we hope you'll come. We're going to have some great men of God there. Dr. Allison will be there teaching the Bible every morning. Oh, the outstanding men of God across the nation will be there speaking, both preachers and laymen. It'll be a real blessing if you could come. There's still some reservation sheets and some sheets down here to explain about it if you care to look at it tonight. But I hope you come on August 11th, I mean August the 8th through the 11th. That's Monday after the first Sunday and through Thursday night. You come if you can, August 8th through 11th. And I know God will bless you if you come. I appreciate everything you've done. I appreciate the love offering you've given to help me keep the work going. Appreciate your prayers. But I want to say personally that I appreciate Brother and Mrs. Don Davis. They've took care of me these whole two weeks. Fed me, bedded me, and looked after me. They've been so kind and so good. It's made it easy for me to be in their home. Fix the meals for me. Let me rest when I needed to. And I shall always be grateful to Brother and Ms. Don Davis for these two weeks of taking care of me. I thank God for them. They're great people, great Christians. And I love them for it. Thank you for everything. May we pray. Dear God, our Father, tonight, we pray that the Holy Spirit shall have this right away in this service. God, our Father, that tonight men and women without God shall wake up to the realization of the danger they're in. We pray, Heavenly Father, tonight that the, you'll take thy servant and loose his tongue and illuminate his mind. And, oh God, how we pray that you'll move in this crowd with sin killing and soul saving, with convicting and converting power. We pray, Heavenly Father, tonight that we'll hear the cry of newborn babes in this altar. Grant that we shall have the privilege and the honor of sitting in the delivery room and watch you birth children into your kingdom tonight. And we pray, Heavenly Father, tonight that the Holy Spirit shall have full sway. The devil shall be driven back and we'll praise your name for it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the scripture that I read to you these words. Lest that be any fornicator or profane person as he saw, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that Edward, when he inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He said, Lest that be any of you who are so profane, who are so ungrateful, who are so broken down. In the moral of your life. That you'd sell your chance for one mess of meat or one morsel of meat like Esau did. So what I want to talk to you about briefly tonight is don't sell your chance with God. 
Every man that's ever been born in this world came into this world with a right to be saved. God willeth the death of no man. So if you go to hell, it's your will, not God's will. He said, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. And my friends, God willeth the death of no man. You've got sense enough to know, and I've got sense enough to know if God had his way to save every lost person in South Carolina right now. And my friends, God has no respect of persons. And I am conscious tonight because of those two things. God has no respect of persons. We're all alike in God's sight. And as a result, God's will is that we'll all be saved. So if we go to hell, it's our fault. Because if God had his way, he'd save you. And just because of who you are, my friends, that doesn't bar you from being saved. And I want you to realize tonight before God, if you go to hell, it's your own fault. It's not the fault of the preacher or the deacon or God or anyone else. It's your fault. So because God has no respect to persons, because God said, whosoever will, let him come. And because God said it's not his will that any man should perish. He's saying, don't any ever be so profane, so ungrateful, so stupid, so wicked, so hard, that you'd sell your chance with God for a little bit of the morsel of meat. Don't sell your chance with God tonight for the gratification of your flesh. For the lust of your eyes and the gratification of your flesh, don't sell your chance with God. You've got a chance with God. You've got an opportunity to come to God. You've got the privilege of coming to God. You've got the right to be saved. But don't sell it to go out to satisfy your fleshful lust. Satisfy the appetites of your flesh. Esau, in order to satisfy his appetite, sold the priesthood. And the birthright, he said to his brother, give me some of that pottage. And his brother said, not so. What do you give me? The priesthood and the birthright. He sold his chance with God. Afterward, we find Esau, according to the scripture, seeking a place of repentance. Carefully with tears. But he never did find him. Why? He sold his chance with God for a mess of pottage. What to do? He said to God, I'd rather have this mess of pottage and to have the priesthood and the birthright of Christ. And we stop to recognize then, my friends, we look back into the book of Hebrews and we find these words in the 10th chapter. Uh, but Christ being come a high priest and good things to come. Beg your pardon, give you the wrong verse. Here it is, 26th verse. If we sin with right, we receive the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a fearful looking for a judgment and for indignation shall devour the adversary. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be though worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God, who hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace? Vengeance belongeth unto me, I recompense, saith the Lord. Fearful hang the fall in the hands of a living God. What's he saying? Done despite under the spirit of grace, trampled on the foot of the blood of Christ. And uh, my friends, there's the whole story. What did he do? He said, I'd rather have this pottage than to have Jesus Christ. That insulted God. That insulted Jesus. That insulted the Holy Spirit. And he trampled under foot the blood of the Lamb of God. And counted it unworthy. And as a result, God left him alone. He sought a place of repentance carefully with tears. But there wasn't any. Don't share your chance with God while you're fooling with the appetites of your flesh. Don't share your chance, my friends, with God for the indulgence of satisfying the godless appetites of your carcasses. Then we find another, my friends, that sold his chance by the pride of his own hands. God said to Cain and Abel, bring an offering or sacrifice for your sins. Abel brought an offering or sacrifice with blood in it. Cain brought one without any blood in it. He brought the works of his own hand. 
He said, look what I've done. The first fruits of his own hands he offered to God. And God said to Cain, that isn't sufficient. God gave Cain the second chance to bring the right sacrifice. But no, sir, Cain brought the works of his own hand. He said to God Almighty, the works of my hands good as the shed blood of your son. It insulted God. It insulted the Holy Ghost. It insulted Jesus Christ. My friends, because he said this is more important than the blood of the Lamb of God. And God made Cain a fugitive from vagabond and an outcast. And Cain never did find a place of repentance. He went on to hell. Because, my friends, he sold his chance with God for the pride of his own hands. Some of you sitting back there saying, I'm good as a preacher. I'm good as a deacon. I'm good as a church member. You're good for nothing but hell if you haven't been washed in the blood of the Lamb. My friends, don't sell your chance with your dirty cheap goodness. It won't rescue you. It won't save you. And you need to realize that, my friends, tonight before God, that old Judas Iscot sold his chance with God for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus said, Judas, what thou doest, doest thou quickly. That minute Judas could accept that Jesus Christ had got saved. But instead he pushed back and went out and sold Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. That was an insult to God. That is an insult to Jesus Christ. That is an insult to the Holy Ghost of God. Because he said, I'd rather have, I'd rather have these 30 pieces of silver than to have salvation through Jesus Christ. Judas come back and tried to find a place of repentance. But Judas never found any place of repentance. As a result of it, he hung himself and died and his bowels bursted out and he found himself in hell forever. Why? He sold his chance for 30 pieces of silver. Don't sell your chance with God for some dirty money, some cheap money, some money. Then we find that another one sold his chance with God for a night of pleasure. Belshazzar sold his chance with God for pleasure. We find that night they had a tremendous party on. The one of the biggest parties ever pitched had 35,000 in the orchestra, 35,000 people playing in harmony, 35,000 instruments, had a thousand tables with their lords and wives and concubines around, and had peacocks pulling miniature golden carts carrying the king's meat and the king's wine. The dining hall's a mile and a half long and a mile wide. And oh, they felt so secure that night. But Belshazzar began to praise the gods of silver and of gold and took the vessels of God that were holy and used them for his selfish gratification of his party. And as a result, a writing came on the hand. He insulted God. He insulted Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And God sent a writing on the wall and said, Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. And this night thou shalt be destroyed. And as a result, Belshazzar wound up in hell that night because he'd rather have his party and desecrate the things of God than to listen to the right way of life. You may plan some party and the handwriting may be fixed to be on your wall. Don't sell your chance with God for some highfalutin party somewhere, some big pleasure night of sin, my friends. And then there was another that sold his chance with God for power and for prestige. And that was Pharaoh. God softened the let old Pharaoh soften his heart, but he'd harden it again. His heart softened, he hardened it again. And finally he wouldn't let the children of Israel go. And you remember the story of how that after a while uh, he sent the death angel, the plague of the death angel, took the life of the firstborn. And old Pharaoh said, I'll, I'll let it go. But when he started to soften up his heart, God had hardened his heart and he couldn't get it soft. God hardened the heart of Pharaoh while he hung on to the crowd. He didn't want to give up. Some of you sitting around holding on to some crowd you don't want to quit. Some crowd you don't want to quit running with. And God may harden your heart while you're doing it. Preacher, would God do that? Let's see if God do it. Let me turn over here and read your scripture. He hath blinded their eyes, hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes and be converted. And I should heal them. Yes, God hardened your heart. He closes your ears. He shuts your eyes and lets you go on to hell. You say, why, preacher? Okay, listen again. Listen again. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions 
that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There comes a time when God gives you over to strong delusions, let you believe your lies that you might be damned because you love the pleasures of righteousness, of sin, rather than the ways of righteousness. And as a result, Pharaoh tried to find a way back to God. He got drowned and went to hell as a result of it. Just like Belshazzar died and went to hell. Why? And then there was a man that had plenty. God blessed him with barns. God blessed him with much. And he built barns and built barns and increased his crops and built barns. Finally, he said, Barns is full. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow you may die. Live it up. God said, Thy fool, this night I'll require thy soul. Then whose barn shall these be? That night God snatched his soul out. He went to hell. Some of you say, Well, I've got it made. I've got a good job. Got home paid for. Got all the people you got a bank account. I've got it made. I don't need God. You fool, you may need him in the next 30 minutes. You don't know. Because after all, we're living in a marvelous day. Marvelous age we're living in. We got blood banks to get back, blood to put other blood in you. Eye banks, kidney banks, all sorts of banks. But we hadn't got any breath banks yet. God just hands you one at a time. Oh, you got their ration. And if God decides you don't get the next breath, he holds it. Who's going to be in God's arm and make him hand it to you? Boast not of thyself of tomorrow. Today is a day of salvation. Now is accepted time. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And I want you to realize, my friends, there's no excuse if you please. There's no excuse if you turn God down, if you reject Jesus Christ. He said because of the manifestation of the eternal Godhead in those days, there'll be no excuse for your not being a Christian and not being saved. And I'm saying, here's a man that's sold his chance for the fleshly gratification. Here's a man sold his chance with God for the just merely for the fact of his good works and the pride of his own self. Here's a man sold his chance with God for 30 pieces of silver. Here's a man that sold his play, his chance with God for a night of pleasure. And here's a man that sold his chance with God to hang on to a crowd that he wanted to hang on to. And here's a man that sold his chance with God to hang on to his wealth. But all of them died and wound up in hell. Hey, what are you selling your chance for? What are you selling out for tonight? I see it happening as I travel across the country. Yon in Kentucky. I saw a nightclub entertainer, a dancing master, and a bathing beauty contest winner reject God one night and turn and walk out of the door. And God left her. And she screamed and fell on the ground. People prayed. They carried her home, limbers a rag. Months later, she died without God, without hope in the world. God had left her. She said, I'd rather have the nightclub and the roadhouse and the beauty uh, contest winners and have God. And God left her. I saw a young woman in the state of out of in Seaside, California. The Spirit of God had her on a conviction. She trembled. She fought God off. And she walked out on God and rejected God's Holy Ghost. And God withdrew from her. And as a result, she said, God's left her. And she's going to hell with a brass hat army officer. That night she told God, I'd rather have that brass hat man and the joy that I get running around with him than have you. And God left her with the brass hat man. He had a wife and two children and she's trying to take him away from them. He'd flown her to Paris, France and dined and dined and danced her. And they furnished her Cadillac convertible, jewelry, silk clothes. But God left her alone. We prayed all night one night, but God left alone said, God's a million miles from me. Hey, don't sell your chance with God. If God's Spirit's been dealing with you, don't sell out for some pet sin. 
or something else. I, right here in the state of North Carolina, I saw a girl one night under the power of conviction come to the altar and get up and said, I'd rather have the gown and dance with a boy tomorrow night than to have Jesus tonight. God left her. And if she's not dead, she's walking the country roads up here in North Carolina crying out, I've got a gown, but God's gone. I dance, but God's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, lads and lasses, don't sell your chance for, of salvation tonight for some pet sin, for something of the world of the devil. This is your chance to turn loose and come to God. This is your day of salvation. Now is your accepted time. God said, my spirit shall not always strive with men while he strive and come. Boast not about tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. And my friends, when the Spirit takes an ocean of leave, no man can retain the Spirit. When he takes an ocean of leave, he is going to leave. And if God's dealing with your heart tonight, hey, are you selling your chance of salvation for something? Oh, these things and many other things I could mention. Are you selling your chance? If so, turn loose of it. Junk it tonight and come to this altar and let God save your soul. We're going to stand and sing. But don't you trample the blood of the Son of God under feet. Don't you turn your nose up at God. Don't you do despite of the spirit of God's grace. You hit this altar. Some of these preachers will help you when you get here. Turn loose and come to God tonight. Today is your day. Now is the salvation. You've heard preaching for two weeks. It's time to get right at God. Would you come? We're going to stand and sing. And if you need to get saved, you come on now. Now is the time. This is the hour. And God help you to do it. Let us stand and sing it. 107. Just as I am without one plea, but that Amen. Thou Amen. For me, Come on while you can. Come on while you can. told me if I'd preach this sermon, it'd be five folks say, two of them share. There's three more out there, right out in there. Turn her loose. Don't stand there and rebel against God. Don't stand there and fight against God. Don't sell your chance for some pet sin or pet pleasure tonight. Turn her loose and walk this aisle for God. There's three more that would have been up here. Come on, while we're saying, come on, come on, three more. Ladies. This is your day. This is your time. This is your out. Come on. Come on now. Don't wait till the Spirit of God leaves you. Don't wait till the Spirit of God gives you up. God help you right now. Come on. There's two more. There's two more. Get down there and don't, don't stand there and go to hell when you can walk down and get things settled with God. God help you to turn her loose now. God help you to come on now. What you do it? Why we sing another stanza? Come on. There's a couple more yet. Come on. Come on. Come on. One right over in there. You better come. You better come. Come on now. Once you come, not at all here yet. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. There's two other people in around this tabernacle that ought to come. God promised me five. There's two more in here that ought to come and get right with God tonight. This is your night. You say, I'll do it some other time. You may not. Today is the day. Now is the time. Don't break about tomorrow. Oh, Brother Jane Henson, come here and lead us in prayer. And you pray that these other two people will come.
See, God wouldn't have told me this in yet, they wouldn't. So there's two more. This is their day. This is your time. Don't stand like that and go to hell. Come on now while you can. Would you do it? My friends, Brother Hinson is going to lead us in prayer. Then you come as we sing. Bow your head, brothers, please. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name tonight, we thank you for the message. We thank you for the moving of the Holy Spirit. We are grateful unto thee, our Father, that these have come down here to the altar tonight. I pray in Jesus' name, dear God, that you would continue to move upon that heart. Lord, there's people here tonight that's lost without God. Our Father, you've been good to them. Lord, you've loved them with an ever-ending love. And our Father, tonight, God, you have reached out to them and touched them, our Father, through the wooing of the Spirit of God. And I pray tonight, God, they would not rebel against the wooing of thy Holy Spirit. I pray tonight, God, they wouldn't sell you out uh, their chance of getting right with God. Oh, God, tonight, I pray in Jesus' name uh, that the Spirit of the living God would arrest their soul uh, and bring them down here to the throne of grace. Uh, Lord, if they'd get right with God, uh, they'd get their hearts in tune with the Lord, uh, whoever they are, and uh, Lord God, whatever that need is, uh, there may be someone here tonight, God, that's already been saved, but they're out of fellowship with God. Help them to come and to get in relationship with God tonight. In Jesus' name, dear God, as we sing another stanza, Lord, this may be, Lord, it could be, very well be the last invitation. It might be the last time that some person will have the opportunity of getting right with God. Lord, help them to take on this. Help them, our Father, to take this opportunity to step out and give themselves to God. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Would you come tonight as we sing another stanza?